This is going to be the first video in a series on algorithmic trading using LumiBot from LumiWealth. And I should say from the outset that this video is for educational purposes only. Uh, you should not use it as trading advice. Okay, so we are going to be using a paper account and we're going to implement a very simple algorithm that just places an order and then we're going to see that in action and then we're going to go ahead and back test the strategy. Okay, so that means the first thing we need is an account in which to place these paper orders. And so I'm going to be using Alpaca, so you can find it at Alpaca Markets. If you don't already have an account, you're going to want to sign up, and uh, you're going to want this one, the Trading API. Okay, I already have an account, so I'll just go ahead and log in, and same thing, I'm going to log into the Trading API. All right, and pretty much the reason I'm using Alpaca is because you can sign up for an account here, a paper account, with just your email address, all right? So you don't need to put in a bunch of personal information, and you can just kind of test drive uh, how algorithmic trading works. So once I get logged in, I'm just going to go to the home page, and uh, just before I started this video, I reset my portfolio with $100,000 in paper money. And what we're going to need here beyond this dashboard is eventually going to be these uh, API keys. So I'll come back to that in a minute. All right, so I'm going to go back to the LumiBot documentation and I'm going to go down to where it says broker configuration here. And they have a bunch of brokers. All right, so Tradeer. All right, there's Alpaca. All right, they have Interactive Brokers, Coinbase, Kraken. All right, and, and they're going to be adding more as they go along. All right, so for whatever broker you're going to be using, you're going to need to set up these environment variables. All right, so we're going to need an API key. We're going to need this API secret. And then uh, we're going to need to set this alpaca is paper to true. All right, so I'm going to jump into Python then and start setting this up. Okay, so when we launch our trading bot, LumiBot is going to be looking for a file that has these environment variables in it. All right, and the file is going to be the .env. File. Okay, so it wanted alpaca is paper. All right, it wants me to set that to true. Okay, then it needs an alpaca API key. Okay, and it also needs alpaca API secret. All right, and just a word of warning here, the alpaca API keys are pretty dynamic. So anytime you refresh the portfolio, you're going to have to go ahead and get new API keys. All right, so I will go back to the alpaca site and do that. All right, so if you just sort of scroll down, right, from that dashboard and we're gonna generate new API keys. So I'll just copy and get my secret. All right, and then one more environment variable I'm gonna set is, is back testing. All right, so you can set these up to either just go live or to just see how they would have performed over some historical period in the past. All right, so I'm going to set this as false. So we're going to set it up both ways. So I'm going to first write the trading bot and make it work so we can see it place an order on Alpaca, and then I'll come back and back test it so we can see what you get when you do that. All right, so that's all I need for the environment. I'll go ahead and save that. And then the next thing I'm going to do is uh, start writing the trading bot and this is going to be very simple we're going to buy on day one and just hold it all right so I'll call it buy and hold okay so before I write any code uh, I want to go ahead and review some of the documentation for LumiBot so I will go back there and I'm going to go down to where it says uh, getting started with LumiBot all right, so yeah, the first thing you're going to want to do is to uh, install it, right? So you can do that in the terminal, right? So in uh, VS Code here, it's just going to be pip install. And if it's your first install, it's just going to be LumaBot, and that will install the latest version. If you have a version because you tried this in the past, you're probably going to want to upgrade it because it's a pretty dynamic library. And yep, they've made some changes recently, so that would just be upgrade. All right, I'm not going to bother to run it because I already have it installed, but this is how you do it. All right, so we're pretty much following through what it says to do here, right? So make a, an account at Alpaca. So all this stuff was already handled in that .env file that I made. All right, and then eventually we're going to be uh, making our own class, and, and we'll have to get some imports from LumiBot to do that. Okay, before I start 
writing the actual code here, I want to take a look at what they call their life cycle method so you can get a better understanding of what's going on. So I will go in here and it's a, it's a graphic. And essentially what we're going to do is import that strategy class and we're going to write our own custom strategy that inherits from that. And the strategy class has all of these what they call life cycle methods. All right, so they all have defaults and if you want to import implement your own trading logic, you're going to need to override or overload uh, some or all of these methods. All right, so I'm just going to be in this simple strategy overriding the initialize method and overriding the on trading iteration. All right, so this is the main method that uh, you implement a, a trading bot in. All right, but you can do other things like something before the market opens, maybe you need to update a model. All right, uh, you can do something before the, the first trade. All right, and then you can do things right before the market closes and then right after the market closes okay and then there's some diagnostic tools here but like I said we're just going to look at initialize and on trading iteration okay so now we're ready to actually write some code and uh, the first thing I'm going to do is import date time so I can do some back testing all right and then everything else is going to come from uh, LumaBot Okay, so I'm importing the backtesting module. Uh, I'm importing the broker is backtesting. All right, these are both coming from that ENV file. All right, and then I'm going to import strategy and trader. So strategy is what's going to be making use of those lifecycle methods, and then trader is actually going to be managing our trading activity. All right, so next thing is I will set up a custom class, and I'll just call it buy hold. And uh, yep, that will inherit from strategy. All right, and as I mentioned, I am going to overload the initialize method. And I'm just going to set one parameter here, and it's going to be what is the sleep time. So how often do I want the algorithm to run? All right, and, and so we can see it. I'll, I'll just set it at 10 seconds, but you could set it as a day. You can set it at every second. You can set it at minutes. All right, so that's all I'm going to do there. Okay, and then the only other method that I'm going to override here is on trading iteration. All right, so inside here, I am going to just check and see, oh, is this the first time through? Because for this particular strategy, I'm just going to take all my available cash and invest it in a, in a single security. So I, I don't want to keep doing that, but this thing is going to try to refresh every 10 seconds. All right, so I'm going to test and see if it is first iteration. All right, so the first time through, we're gonna set a symbol. All right, and uh, let's, let's try NVIDIA. Uh, I'm going to uh, get a price. So for this, I'm gonna go out to Alpaca and get the last price. All right, pass in that symbol. And then I'm gonna get a quantity. And again, I'm gonna base this on, oh, how much cash do I have on Alpaca? All right, so it's gonna be self.cash. And uh, I am going to do some floor division there divided by the price. So I won't use exactly all my cash. I'll kind of round down a little bit here. And it, this will also prevent me from trying to buy a fractional share. All right, so I'll just use most of my cash. All right, so I got a symbol. I got a price. I got a quantity. And now uh, we're ready to set up an order. All right, so I'm going to access this create order method. And there's a bunch of parameters for this. I'm just going to set a symbol, a quantity, and what side of the trade am I going to be taking, buy or sell. So I'll pass in that symbol. I'll pass in my quantity. All right, and uh, this will be a buy. All right, so I'll leave it up to you to kind of explore all the different parameters. All right, this will just be a market order, so obviously we can set some limit and, and that kind of stuff. All right, so there's my order, and then uh, I'm just going to submit it. Okay, so that's all there is to it, right? A very simple, let's get our feet wet and see how this thing just kind of roughly works. All right, I will set up the uh, run conditions here. So, all right, so we're going to just want to see, okay, are we really trading or is it a back test? So I will test that value in is back testing. And when it's true, we will back test. And I'm going to need a start date and I'll use date time here. And uh, it's November 12th here. I'll go back about a year. All right, and then I have to set an end. 
All right, I'm going to take my buy whole class and I'm going to access the method dot back test and I'll pass in a couple parameters here. So I'm going to use that Yahoo data back testing that I imported and I'm going to use the start and I'm going to use the end. All right, so the first time through is back testing is going to be false, so we'll ignore all this and we will fire this else block. And I'm going to set a variable strategy and it's going to be that buy hold and I'm going to pass in the broker. All right, this is coming from that environment variable file. All right, I'm going to instantiate a trader. All right, and then I'm going to add the strategy to the trader. Okay, and then we'll just tell the trader to run. All right, so very simple. You can see a lot of the stuff is, is kind of intuitive once you get used to it. All right, we're going to have a strategy. We're going to have a trader. We're going to add a strategy to the trader, and then we're going to run it. The only thing that's going to be different is, oh, we probably have some more sophisticating trading logic than just buying something and sitting on it. All right, so let's try it and see if I can do all that without making any mistakes. All right, so it looks pretty good. And all right, so it looks like it has in fact executed. It looks like I did uh, I did write that without uh, making any errors. And nice now every 10 seconds it's going to keep trying to do the same thing again. But oh, there's not going to be any trades. So let's go take a look at Alpaca and see what happened there. All right, so we can see that yep, we bought 673 shares, and uh, oh, so far we've lost about 27 dollars. All right, so that is working. And yeah, just like that, I'm up $27. Okay, let's go and stop the trader and we'll try it as a back test so we can see what that looks like. All right, so I'm just gonna get in here and control C to stop the code. All right, I'm gonna open up that .emv file and set back testing to true so we can see what the back testing reports look like. All right, and then uh, let me kill this terminal and then we'll try it one more time. Okay, so it is running the back test. Okay, so since the algorithm runs every 10 seconds, the back test takes quite a while, so keep that in mind. Once it's done, it should automatically load a couple of reports. Okay, so this is from Quantstats, which you can run as a standalone back tester, and I have a video that shows you how to do that without using LumiBot. But we can see that, oh yeah, NVIDIA over the last year, all right, is about uh, 3x uh, where we started. All right, but some nice portfolio metrics here from Quantstats, and then if I'm in the market 100% of the time, uh, it, would, it comes out as 69%, right? So that's 252 trading days over. 365 all right so it looks like I'm in pretty much the whole time all right this is kind of unique to how uh, Lumi wealth has implemented quant stats all right so you know, if you just run quant stats by itself it'll say we were in the market 100% of the time all right but we can see the right, compounding annual gross returns there and uh, all kinds of stuff about uh, how this thing performed over over that time period the second report you get is just your equity line. All right, and this is generated by LumiWealth, right? So there's my equity line under my strategy. All right, here it is. If I had just invested in uh, the S&P 500 ETF. All right, and then we can see at the beginning, all right, I kind of used all my cash and I I'm sure I have a few dollars there, but it looks like I used pretty much all my cash. And uh, this is what it looked like over that time period. Okay, so that's it for this video. I will go into something a little bit more involved in the next video so we can see, oh, how does a real trading algorithm that fires periodically throughout a day, how does that work? So for now, I hope this helps you get started and I hope to see you at the next video.